Remembering a fallen NACA member, skilled nursing and assisted living may get stronger abuse reporting requirements and former employees formally charged in Hollywood Hills hurricane related deaths. This and more next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, September 25th, 2019. To stay in the know of Long-Term Care News, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We start today with some somber news. A longtime NACA member, Key to Quality Award winner, volunteer advocate and champion to this association and her profession, Pamela Condor, passed away last week. She worked as a CNA at Good Samaritan Society in Ottumwa, Iowa for many years. Pam was diagnosed with liver cancer in January and was in hospice at Ridgewood Specialty Care Center in Ottumwa for a few months before passing. Upon her passing, she has donated her eyes. She and her family had elected to not have a funeral, but she is a CNA worth remembering. And I can tell you that she had a heart of gold and she will be very, very much missed. She was 49. Never wanting to follow too closely in skilled nursing's regulatory footsteps, assisted living professionals soon may not have a choice when it comes to elder abuse reporting. Changes could be forthcoming after a federal report found differences in the two post-acute care providers' reporting requirements. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services is currently undertaking efforts to strengthen oversight, according to comments submitted by the Government Accountability Office's report, which was released last Wednesday. The report found that while there are specific requirements for nursing homes and state survey agencies for reporting and investigating elder abuse, CMS asks state Medicaid agencies to develop policies for reporting and investigating elder abuse in assisted living facilities. The GAO report was produced at the request of Senator Suzanne Collins, the Republican from Maine, chairwoman of the Senate Special, Co Senate Special Committee on Aging, and Senator Amy Klo Klobuchar, the Democrat from Minnesota, ranking member of the Senate Committee on Rules and Administration. We'll be back right after this break. CNA TV. CNA TV. Memberships have changed over the years. This has been your long-term care news update. I'm Lisa Sweet, co-founder of NACA. CNA TV. Don't miss out on any of the great programming on CNA TV. Subscribe today. Four former Florida nursing home employees have been formally charged over the deaths of 12 residents related to Hurricane Irma. The Broward County State Attorney's Office formally filed criminal charges on Monday against Jorge Carballo, 61, Sergio Collin, 45, Althea Meggie, 36, and Tamika Miller, 31. Carballo and Collin have been charged with nine counts of aggravated manslaughter of an elderly person or disabled adult. The two worked as administrator and head nurse, respectively, at the Rehabilitation Center at Hollywood Hills in Hollywood, Florida, during the hurricane. Miller, a licensed practical nurse, was charged with six counts of aggravated manslaughter of an elderly person or disabled adult and two counts of tampering with or fabricating evidence in connection with medical records. Maggie, a registered nurse, was charged with two counts of aggravated manslaughter of an elderly person or disabled adult and two counts of tampering with or fabricating evidence in connection with medical records. If convicted, the aggravated manslaughter charges carry a maximum sentence of up to 30 years in state prison, while the tampering charges have a maximum sentence of up to five years in state prison, the report stated. The employees turned themselves in in late August after arrest warrants were issued. Following their arrest, lawyers for the three of the former employees said that evidence will show that they, quote, did everything they could during the hurricane. 14 residents died at Hollywood Hills facility after Hurricane Irma knocked out its power and air conditioning in September 2017. 12 of the deaths were ruled homicides. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week, and I'll see you on Wednesday.